Schrenton Josick, also known as Joka Amsterdam, was born on October 25, 1962, in Smederevska, Serbia. He began his career as a professional criminal in the Netherlands. There, he came under the tutelage of Zelchko Arkin Razjatovic, who would go on to become an infamous warlord, with whom he was involved in several armed robberies. In this video, we are going to discuss Joka Amsterdam, infamous Serbian mafia boss. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. Before starting the video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. But robberies were a hazardous way of making money, and in the 1980s, Josik joined the Yugoslav gang led by Ljubinko Duja Besirovic. For over three decades, he operated in the criminal underworld of several countries and risen to the top by being more vicious than the homegrown gangsters. But his reign seems to have come to an end by the hands of the law. He obtained the cocaine from contacts in Colombia and earned a name as the Cocaine King. He worked for Duja Besirovic as an underboss. He later lived in Bulgaria, where he was successful in drug smuggling until his arrest in 2002. Upon returning to Serbia, he took over companies by force, utilizing the Sersin clan, one of the three then most powerful clans of Belgrade, Serbia. Joka was later involved in the 2008 car bombing of Croatian journalists Ivo Pukanic and Niko Franjic. Besarovic was the leader of the Belgrado group, which operated mainly in Amsterdam and was involved in drug trafficking, extortion, and gambling. Its members also have a notorious reputation within the Dutch underworld as ruthless killers. Josik managed to solidify his position and became his right-hand man of Besirovic. In the late 1980s, the Belgrada group became involved in a war with a Dutch gang led by Klaus Bruinsma. The Yugoslavs claim some of Bruinsma's men stole a shipment of drugs from them. Both sides refused to cave in, and this marks the beginning of a war that would claim the lives of dozens of gangsters on both sides. Both Besimrovic and Bruinsma are murdered by assassins. In October of 1990, Besarovic is shot inside his house while his assailants are outside looking in. He dies in a hospital three weeks later. Bruinsma is shot to death at close range by cop-turned-gangster Martin Hoogland outside an Amsterdam hotel in the summer of 1991. Hoogland was an associate of the Belgrado group. With Besirovic gone, Josik assumes leadership of the gang and continues to apply pressure on the Dutch gangsters. So much even that two of his targets decide they'd rather spend a year and a half in jail than face Josik and his gang of hitmen. They tip off the police to a van filled with guns. The two men stand next to the van when cops arrive and put them in handcuffs. Though Josik seems to have the upper hand as far as a dangerous reputation goes, that doesn't mean he himself isn't in fear of retribution from the Dutch. When Dutch police raid his home, he assumes they are killers and fires two shots at the cops, one of which lands and injures a policeman. But in 1993, when the Yugoslav crime boss is sentenced to 1,004 days in prison for the shooting, he is nowhere to be found. His extensive contacts within the European underworld have made it easy for him to travel to any country and manage his criminal affairs from there. While the drug war raged on in the Netherlands, Josik had become a successful crime boss in Eastern Europe. But the law has a wide reach, and in 2002, Josik was arrested in Sofia, Bulgaria, and extradited to the Netherlands to serve his sentence. In 2006, Josik is flown to Serbia, where he has been convicted of ordering the murders of Goran Marjanovic and his girlfriend Maria Dodevic in July of 1995, after which he is sentenced to 15 years in prison. 15 years is a long time, but apparently, Serbian authorities are not finished with Josik. He is currently on trial for the deaths of journalists Ivo Pukanic and Niko Franjic, who was killed by a bomb in October of 2008. Josik allegedly paid the hitman 15 million euros. If found guilty of these murders, it seems very likely that Josik, right, his criminal career has come to an end. In April 2016, Josik sought damages against the state of Serbia for unlawful detainment in another murder investigation, the death of Croatian journalist Ivo Pukanic, for 60 million dinars, approximately 500,000 euros. His trial in that case has already cost the state 11 million dinars in legal fees.
Serbian Mafia today is estimated to earn 30 billion euros euros annually. Their annual earnings on the cocaine market in Europe are worth 5.4 billion euros euros. According to the DEA, a loan cartel, Tito Dino is estimated at 23 billion euros on the cocaine market. In June 2013, the world-renowned magazine Forbes published a list of the richest mafia bosses in the world. Serbian drug lord Darko Saric was in a high fifth place. He is estimated to have assets worth $27 billion. According to estimates by the DEA and Europol, a Serbian cartel known as Los Balkans sends about 500 tons of cocaine annually to the old continent. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe and we will be back soon with another video.